You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Have you ever had to save the city from a kaiju by using alien superpowers? If you have, then this episode is definitely for you. Because today on Systematic Geekology, we're going to be talking about Ultraman. We are the priests of the geeks, meaning that we are mediators between pop culture and the Christian faith. This is not going to be a bait and switch. This isn't a trap at all. We're just a couple good looking guys who really like watching monsters use basic judo moves on each other. (laughs) And if you enjoy listening to our show, then you should definitely head on over to patreon.com slash Systematic Geekology. Subscribe to one of our tiers where you can unlock D&D playthroughs, monthly comic book reviews. And this this month, Patreon backers should be getting a movie review, an exclusive movie review as well. Unfortunately, there is not a tier that you can subscribe to that gives you videos of us dressed as giant monsters doing basic judo moves on each other. But Maybe we have someday. goals. Maybe someday. We do have goals. That's patron goals. That's, right. You know, life exactly goals for the new year. We can exactly make that right. Happen. I'm one of your hosts for today's episode, Brandon Knight. And today at work, I loaded $9,000 worth of donuts onto a truck for a school. That's what, what I did. What does $9,000 worth of donuts look like? How many Two, boxes is that? 200. 200 boxes worth. And I there got, you go. I was like, heaven. Sounds like heaven. <laughs> And uh, lately, I have been watching on Apple TV Plus The Snoopy Show, which is the newest version of Peanuts cartoons. And I th- I feel about them, I feel about new Snoopy, like how a lot of people who grew up watching The Muppet Show feel about <laughs> new Muppet movies. Now, hey guys, I'm Will Rose. I'm a Lutheran pastor in Chapel Hill, part of the Systematic Ecology Um Illuminati of hosts. Well, we won't use an Illuminati, but we'll use like a, a cabal. Well, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Justice League, uh, Knights of the Round Table. I don't know. Uh, but glad to be a part of this uh, circle of hosts, um, dealing out what we're geeking out on and having great conversations. And what I've been doing lately, um, I my, my local comic book store has a weekly online auction show they do on nice. facebook live and they throw up, they throw up uh current books but they also do back issues and lately what i go in there to do is uh, i have my own pull list but they'll throw up a book from the 1970s an obscure comic whether it's mainline superhero or something i've never heard of and whatever price they put up there i wait to see if anybody grabs it and if nobody does, then I try to talk them down a couple of dollars and and grab that book. And I'm I'm usually I go after the the most um, kind of crazy 1970s cover that has like everything in the kitchen sink on it with word bubbles and thought bubbles. I'll I'll find one of those and go, yep, I'm gonna buy that online. And they'll put it in my pull box and grab it. So that's that's what I've been doing the past um, few weeks and and loving it, and not knowing that I have something cool in my pull list to to read. What's been your most recent steal? I'm curious. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Um, I think I did a what if. What if uh, Thor fought Conan? Oh, It's kind of an obscure book. Yeah, it's not even on. It is such a good little book. Like they run in to Krom. Like Thor butts up against Krom and they have like this god duel and they question oh it's and then they fight but then they become friends they go on a quest and they come back around and uh it is is pretty good so for i I forgot how much i bought it for i think i talked him down a couple of bucks and then there it was it's pretty good nice that sounds good Uh, I am Joe. I am another one of the uh, Knights of the Round Table. I liked that one. I feel like we need to roll with that one. Okay. Um, And what I've been into recently is uh, I've been doubling back on the Boom Studios run of Power Rangers that's been going on for the last couple of years. And I've been doubling back and... uh, reading some of the stuff that I've missed on it and all of that. And let me tell you, if you are a fan and and we're actually going to touch on this later on in the episode, if you're a fan of like that kind of nineties era, mighty morphing team of the power Rangers, like you need to pick this up. It is fantastic. <laughs> nice. 
Love it. All right. So again, today's topic is going to be Ultraman. And I'm really excited to be doing this episode. This episode is going to be for beginners because this is a very niche category to be geeking out on. Although it's not like this is a brand new thing. This is a mega media out of Japan. It's been going since the 60s, the mid 60s in both print and on screen. If you go on Wikipedia, there's like a thousand little different spinoff versions of this show. Within the past five years, Netflix has done an exclusive version. Marvel has been running comics written by Kyle Higgins. I think the newest version is coming out later this year. I think it might be in March. Higgins is I don't know if he's writing it or not, but he's got a the new run is coming out in March. So it's a bit obscure, granted, but it's out there. And I think our hope today is to get you interested and maybe check out that new series when it hits the shelves here in March. Joe, in our group chat, you have made it very clear that you are very excited to be here to talk about this. So why don't you lead us off then? Why why do you like Ultraman so much? Give it give it to us. So I was like I was uh, telling Will before we we started recording this. There is a group of 90s kids out there that have just an obscene level of obscure Japanese media knowledge because of the um the 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 craze that went on with adapting tokusatsu which is for those of you that don't know ja- a form of japanese media um it literally means special effect that you know if you things like um power rangers that's tokusatsu um it didn't have much of a life in in america but common writer is another big one oh, yeah. um that ended up getting adapted uh to master writer in in the us and so so you have this whole lineage of stuff, let alone getting into the kaiju side with, you know, Godzilla and stuff like that, that when, when, uh, you know, I was literally when in 93, I was literally the target audience for Power Rangers and I was hooked. Like that was, that was my big geekdom growing up and so as a result of that i w- i found all of these other like ips and different things like that and i remember going to um my aunt's house she was the one with the with the deluxe cable package with all yes. of the bells and whistles and all of that kind of stuff and there was this um the like a cartoon channel that would show old uh ultraman and stuff like that and so i remember seeing that and and just eating it up now it's something that's old enough that you know i i fell more in love with it as time went on like as the internet was more of a thing and it was easier to find media that was a bit more obscure and things like that but it's something that you know, for me, I love a good, healthy dose of let me see the the wire strings, right? Okay. Like you look, at, you look far enough back in Godzilla's history, you look far enough back in Ultraman's history, stuff like that. You're going to be able to find some form of media where you can see the strings moving, the right. puppet or the the figurine or whatever. And there's just something delightfully cheesy about Mm. engaging with something like that let alone when you you know have those kinds of ties to it being like part of the family of superhero stuff that you're really a big fan of sure i i definitely connect with the delightfully cheesy aspect like that Mm -hmm. is that is what brings me to this now in that same group chat Joe is going off about these different 90s things of that he really likes. And I was like, you like giant monsters. I like giant monsters. I like Ultraman. Do you like Ultraman? And then out of nowhere, Pastor Will says, hey, if you're talking about Ultraman, I want in on this. And I was like, they're the last person I thought. So, right. Will, why don't you throw yourself into this? Why Ultraman? Is it like the sci fi thing? Because I know you're a sci fi guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's a combination of everything so like 
throw everything in the mixing bowl and you get ultra, you get superheroes, you get Godzilla, you get monsters, you get sci-fi. It's kind of, this genre is Japan's premier superhero genre coming out of the popularity of, of Godzilla. And so right. you get a Kung Fu aspect, you get mm-hmm. judo, you get monsters, you get, get all this stuff. And as being kind of one of the older hosts on the thing, I'm a child of the seventies and eighties. And so I remember coming home uh, and, and pulling up TBS and watching old like oh. cartoons and different stuff. And, and a show as a kid, I remember specifically was space giants. I don't know if you guys are familiar with space giants. You you can pull it up. It's this weird Japanese um, show of this boy who has a magic whistle and he blows it and these space giants come in, they turn into jets and and they're fighting big monsters. And 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 I think Ultraman was also a part of that, too. Like it either came before or after that show was on TV. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd forgotten about these shows until I read Ready Player One. And I was reading the book and he just threw every pop culture reference you could ever think of into that book. And and he alludes to Ultraman and Space Giants in that book. And I was like, oh, I remember this show. So, of course, I went on a YouTube di- di- uh, deep dive <laughs> and found all these things. And I was like, cool. And then I remembered that as a kid um, for the summer, sometimes our school would give us like – um, movie passes, like go see a movie for a dollar. And my mom like dropped me off at the movie theater, gave me a pass for a dollar. And one of the movies was like an old Ultraman movie. Hmm. And I just remember thinking, how cool is this? Like, this is a, um, a superhero akin to say Shazam. We have a kid okay. who, uh, says a magic word or does something, uh, magical and mystical and transforms into a hero that can fight the big giant that's threatening the whole city akin to donald blake smashing Hmm. the stick and becoming thor um you have this kind of childhood superhero fantasy is i'm just a kid i'm weak how could i take on this big external threat well i'd say this magic word and boom i'm transformed into a powerful superhero that can save the world and i and i like godzilla too i grew up on the coast i would literally as a kid have nightmares of like something coming out of the ocean Oh my god! Like stomping on our neighborhood, and maybe I don't know which came first, the Godzilla movie or my imagination, and then seeing Godzilla. <laughs> um, so, so that whole genre of Japanese horror slash sci fi leading down the road, and I love superheroes. So, Ultraman was just an extension of of that. And over the years, kind of dabbled in a little bit, and I read the Marvel run okay. to kind of get into um, as well. So it's a it's a fun it's a fun superhero niche for sure. Nice for me. I so how I get how I fit into this episode. Uh, I just have graduated from college. This is like 2015 or so. Um, my brothers, I have three younger brothers, high school, middle school age, the three of them. And every Friday night was just the four of us hanging out, watching ridiculous things on TV. If anybody <laughs> it, go to systematicology.org and let us know if you ever want reviews of the Boggy Creek Bigfoot movies, because I've seen a thousand of them. That was one of the Mm. things we would watch on Friday nights. And one of my brothers, I don't remember which one, was on YouTube and came across this. And all of the episodes of that 66 Ultraman run was at the time available on YouTube for free. I don't know if it still is or not. I didn't get a chance to look. And that's what we would do Friday nights. We would put this on just for a good laugh. The work week is over. The school week is over. And we would hang out and watch these ridiculous shows together. And it was a lot of fun. (laughs) Who would like to take a crack at maybe, you know, like I said, there's a lot of different versions, a lot of different spinoffs. Who would like to take a crack at maybe giving us the gist? What is the basic plot line that's kind of running throughout all these different variations i think will you kind of hit on it a little bit there's kind of this like shazam donald blake thor type of transformation into a thing a lot of japanese monsters in it joe do you want to maybe get this started a little bit for us yeah so ultraman is actually um the second major series in the ultra series the first one being ultra q um i was trying to see if i could find when it uh 67 is when is when it, it first started and um this was when we were this was during the time of kaiju monster craze 
Godzilla really created an entire um, like subgenre of sci-fi and all of that. So this is a major um, that that's the major theme of this, where you know you see these um, kind of a kind of a monster of the week sort of thing. Um, Godzilla was actually a part of this series sporadically mm-hmm. for the name value, um, and then spun off from there. You have Ultraman now. Ultraman is a combination of a human and, that uses an alien device to transform into Ultraman as the means to um, defend the Earth from different kaiju and things like that. And so this is where you have a lot of the creation of the the villain of the week archetype Mm. that that a lot of this can comes from this era of tv superhero sci-fi sort of things because it's the easiest way and on and actually fun facts part of where they were trying to go with ultraman was a means to use like get additional use out of all of the miniatures that were made for the godzilla films Mm. Um, that was part of why you see a lot of, you know, eagle eyed kaiju fans will, can watch, um, early days, uh, Ultraman and be able to notice some of the same monsters get, you know, recreated sometimes with the same name, sometimes without, but, um, that's in, in a nutshell, if you're going back to the original now, Mm -hmm. there is a whole multiverse of Ultraman that they have established and they've done they've done things with and that's some of the coolest stuff as far as like if you are a fan of multiple iterations of your favorite hero all teaming together all of that absolutely check out the Ultraverse stuff but if you're going back to the original that's basically what you what you had was you know this uh, symbiotic relationship between um human and alien by means uh or or in order to defend the earth things like that um they wanted to make they wanted to make him balanced so if you notice the original design of Ultraman has a little gem looking thing in mm-hmm. uh the middle of his chest <laughs> it would link to let him know that he was running out of time because he could only be Ultraman for three minutes. Um, the idea being that that three minutes would kind of resonate with um, Japanese fans as it was coming out. Your standard uh, uh, meal of rice took about the uh, noodles took about three minutes to cook. Boxing mm-hmm. matches were about three minutes in length, oh. that sort of thing. And okay. um, you would commonly see the trope where he would, you know, it would be this long, you know, efforted battle and all of that. And then the thing would start blinking and then he'd kick it into high gear and mm-hmm. just start beating up on the on the monster. And and from that point, you knew that the that the fight was over. Yeah, creating that sense of urgency for the fans to look and say, yeah. like, oh, no, here it goes. You have to... <laughs> Well, you guys just did a wrestling episode and you're kind of like, yeah, you, you mix it up for a little bit, but man, you only can do it for so long. So how are you going to re- you know, ramp this up a little bit? But but yeah, kaiju meaning literally strange beast. What's the strange beast of the week? Mm. And coming out of Godzilla, you know, from the 50s, you have this, uh, you know, this national trauma of, of the atom bomb mm-hmm. and the destruction of a town. And so wrestling with nuclear fallout and destruction and really work working out their their trauma from from World War Two mm-hmm. uh, with Godzilla. Here you have like their mixtion of genres and here you, you mix sci fi with with a superhero. And and well, another thing I like is you have this kind of like secret society, secret defenders, the United mm-hmm. Space Patrol, mm-hmm. who are really the ones if the world only knew what they're protecting the world from, then everyone would lose their their sleep at night and not know what's going on. So they're the ones who are really behind the curtain defending Earth. And so somebody merges with this uh, mysterious warrior from the stars, uh, this outside help of, of an alien to, to help Earth defend against these crazy, strange beasts that are invading it. Yeah, and if I, yeah. If I remember right, that uh, super secret society, they were scientists too, continuing to right. lean into that, like dealing with the, uh, coping with the fallout from the the atom bomb and also they all wore matching x-wing fighter uniforms at least in the original exactly. ultraman series it was that orange yeah. with like the white it looked it looked uh-huh. like an x-wing uh-huh. fighter pilot outfit 
Yeah. I think yeah. it's also interesting to reflect on like this is what's going on in Japan. At the same time, 1966, what is the hot thing here in America? That's Adam West dressed up as Batman running around. That's Bruce mm-hmm. Lee doing the Green Hornet. That's lost in space. And in the meantime, in Japan, you've got these three minute wrestling matches with a space alien and a giant beast that <laughs> <laughs> that's also dealing with some like deeper issues, like Will was saying, of dealing with like this trauma from the nu- the nuclear bombs. It's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's getting not to go too far down the down the Godzilla track of it all because that's a that's a conversation in and of itself. But that's why when you see these different eras of different the different production companies that made these different th- mm-hmm. these different IPs because that's the thing, right? Like with Toho was the big one right. when it was first starting out, and they were also handling Godzilla and all of that. Um, some of the more famous stuff out of Godzilla's um, list of of uh, movies and different things like that has came out of the the Toho era, but you can see reflected where Japan is as a society with what is being showcased, what aspect of the story is being showcased. Is Godzilla a um, a, a villain mm-hmm. or a hero? Um, mm-hmm. Are aliens good or bad? Are people good or bad? That's part of why you saw such a big emphasis on the melding of outer space, almost like you're looking for that hope outside of yourself sort of mm-hmm. idea, and mutated creatures as a means of like, no, no, we're going to sit in this, in this, the, hmm. the, the fallout for, from what has happened sort of thing. And that's how you get a lot of the monster stuff that was displayed during this time. And it's really interesting. You bring up a good point, Brandon, because you, you look at where America was and these kinds of things were almost a, a comedy bit. And sure, mm-hmm. you had the moments where, you know, um, the, the, the character that, that turns into Ultraman pulls out, goes to pull out his, his uh, transformation device and has a spoon instead, like the little slapstick yeah. comedy moments like that Mm -hmm. that yeah sure we're a part of it but the storytelling the gravitas that they gave to it that you made they they made you they they wanted you to feel something based off of the actions that were happening whereas Mm -hmm. at that same token or at that same time rather in america it was it was the exact opposite in a lot of ways. Yeah. You weren't supposed. This was supposed to be the let me up moment. This is supposed to be the time that you like disengage and you might as well be watching something like Abbott and Costello or the Three Stooges hmm. or something along those lines. It's not that same kind of weighty. And I am absolutely certain that somewhere in that there is some Adam West Batman fan who's very very mad at me right now, and that's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I like Adam West Batman and I started it. So and I like the Green Hornet show. Never could really get yeah. into uh Lost in Space. You know, you got like carrots doing things on that show. But uh mm. Mm. but no, I definitely I definitely agree with that. So Will, you uh you mentioned earlier that you read the Kyle Higgins Ultraman run, right? Right. Mm-hmm. How was that? I haven't read it. I thought it was good. They did a good job of of really tying it to the original story and origin story from the 60s, but also bringing it up to modern day life. And, and if, even if you're brand new and have know nothing about Ultraman, you could pick it up and read it and they give you a history. There's a little mystery of who's who and what's going on and are, are United Space Patrol good or evil or, you know, it's kind of like. Yeah. You know, if you think that Ultraman is a deep cut and you're like, what does that have to do with anything? I guarantee you, whatever fandom you're a part of, Ultraman has had a part of it or part of that genre bled into it. So whether it's S.H.I.E.L.D. or whether mm-hmm. the Eternals movie with the Celestials and is our humans a problem or mold on a piece of bread or what's the problem of evil? Should we just destroy the earth? Should we not? Some of those themes of are is humanity a gift or, an, or a nuisance? Um 
all plays around with with these kind of sci-fi tropes and, and genres. So Ultraman is the same. And that comic book does a good job. The art super good. Mm. Um, I didn't pick up the second volume just because I feel like I had my fill and it was good and I can only have so much, spend so much on my pull list. <laughs> um, but but I, yeah, if you want a good introduction before watching these shows or going into YouTube deep dive, it's a, it's a good graphic novel and, and a lot of fun. Nice. I like Kyle Higgins. Yeah. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I uh, he, I'd like that Nightwing New 52 run. I know n- not too many people will say I like something from the New 52 era of DC, <laughs> but I did like that Nightwing run he used he read, mm-hmm. or he wrote. Joe, yep. you like that Netflix series, right? <laughs> I I did. I really did. I I actually had no idea that that they were making um an Ultraman series and I I found it and I you know just I, by the time I found it it was bingeable I'm not sure if it was always bingeable but I watched right. the entire thing I'll be honest it was it was it is a little slow to start but the way that they take into account everything that happened before and the way that they tie it into the original series I think is really awesome if you're a fan of continued storytelling it's it's in a lot of ways it's they they call it a a reboot but in a lot of ways it's a requel it's a it's a reboot sequel where you're you are it's continuing on that original storyline by making the main character um the original ultraman's uh son and continuing that on and and you get to see you know what do what what does it look like if the ultraman tech isn't is no longer necessarily a gift from an outside world but more of a government issued weapon hmm. for for defense against monsters and kaiju and things like that and that's not usually something that i'm super into when you when you make it about a government body or something along those lines. But I think for Ultraman, you almost need to because the the defense force is, is such a big part of the, the... They're basically a character unto themselves within mm-hmm. Ultraman. So being able to exercise those muscles a little bit and tell that story, I thought was pretty cool. Nice. All right. Well, before we hopped on today, you said... You had some questions for us, so I'm going to I'm going to open the floor t- to you. Did you have any questions still uh, regarding Ultraman or? No, I mean, I guess I was going to say if, if somebody out there was going to say, all right, I want to go down this road. I don't have enough fandoms in my life. I'm going to start going here. Where do I start? What do I get into? I mentioned earlier and and I was almost kicked off this recording that I was like, I I, I tried to watch the Netflix cartoon Ultraman and, and it didn't really hit me right. So they're like, <laughs> oh, Will, how dare you? <laughs> no, no, but, I, you know, I think it's the animation style. It's the storytelling slow. How much time do I want to invest? Um, You know, and, and I guess... uh. You know, I would love for them to do a huge brand new reboot, t- uh, whether it's live action TV or a big movie for the theater over here, kind of like that did with Godzilla versus King Kong, mm. bring in Ultraman. But but for those out there who who wanted to jump in, we already talked about the the Marvel reboot mm. that was only a couple of years ago uh, would be good. But are there other storylines, books, TV shows, YouTube channels, movie that can go to Amazon Prime and and download or or watch that you would suggest um, us to watch or consume. Joe, you want to take a swing at that first or Yeah, so outside of the um outside of the Netflix series, that's probably the most accessible option Mm -hmm. that one would have at their disposal. Um, Short of reading the comics. Um, Outside of that, I would have to go with a, one of the, the TV shows called Ultraman Leo. Ultraman Leo is um, probably the best version that I can think of. Uh, that has from a from a dramatic storytelling standpoint they mm. they focus very heavily on character development and storytelling and things like that um versus just making it about 
the aliens fighting kai- kaiju sort of thing okay <laughs> so to me i would say that that's probably that's probably the best option from a from a storytelling standpoint and you can find that on uh crunchy roll that's actually where you'd find oh. a lot of the the um different iterations of uh ultraman would be on crunchy roll now was there ever like a, a godzilla ultraman team up like crossover like uh, team up in the movies or shows and stuff. Did they? Yeah, in hang the out? original. <laughs> did, they uh, in the, did they hang out? They went out um, and had some sushi together or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah, in the original uh, series, Godzilla was was a part of it, and they fight oh, because that cool. was still during the the time frame that Godzilla was um, a villain. Okay. So I'm going to, when I go home, I'm going to pull up YouTube and say Godzilla versus Ultraman and see what comes up. We'll see what happens. Yep. Someone's got to have out there. That, maybe. That is a money maker waiting to, ha- to happen at this point. Yeah, it's got to. Come on. Like yeah. a Let's show, see. a movie, a comic, a something. Like, especially mm-hmm. now that they're doing that new series with uh, Godzilla and Kong, that, new, yeah. that newer yeah. run. Throw Ultraman in there. More Monthra, too. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, Moving on now into the more spiritual end of things. Yeah, you know, we're taking kind of a high level here, uh, not doing like a deep character dive or a specific show. So I was just taking some time to reflect on Ultraman in general. And where do we see some themes that may connect to scripture? Mm-hmm. And I'll, t- I'll toss a couple that came my way. If you guys want to throw a couple out there as well, that's perfectly fine. Uh, a couple that came my way, you know, we have this, it's a normal human who is indwelt by an alien species that equips him to be able to do something greater than himself and to go into a greater story, a greater battle that of himself as a normal human, he cannot He can't do he can't fight these giant lobster creatures like he needs the thing that looks like a sonic screwdriver to transform him into full Ultraman. And to me, that sounds very similar to the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives as believers that the the Holy Spirit, when we come to know Christ the Savior, indwells us and equips us for the ministry, whatever ministry he has us in you any believer has a ministry field we're all part of the harvest and the holy spirit he equips us with gifts and talents and ability to be a part of this greater story of the kingdom of god the other one and then i'll let you guys jump in on this the other one that stood out to me and it's kind of the uh thread that you can pull throughout all of the kaiju godzilla everything is this idea of reflecting on the reality of the nuclear bomb that destroyed so much Mm. this thread of nuclear waste, nuclear destruction, pollution in general is a common Mm. thread. I think that's part of what runs down Ultraman's ability. When the jewel starts lighting up, it's because of the earth's pollution, like wears down his ability. And within recent years, you know, scripture teaches that we are to you know have dominion over the earth but god's word also talks about being good stewards of what is given to us and Mm. i really think this giant blue marble that we live on like i think christians should be concerned about the environment about pollution i'm not a tree hugger before everyone starts throwing stones at me But I do think we live in a reality where this is part of what we should be good stewards of and battle. You know, we represent Jesus by taking care of the earth. So, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, if there's anything this pandemic has revealed is how interconnected everybody is uh, from relational, from from humans to the environment and and what that means to one another. As someone who grew up on the beach, I'm not a tree hugger, but I'm I'm definitely an ocean hugger. And I don't (laughs) want the waves that I surf on uh, to be polluted in in any kind of way or prohibit me playing in the ocean and and that kind of water source of source of life. So, so, yeah, and I think you're onto that. Walter Brueggemann, the Old Testament professor, talked about how the Old Testament is is just a series of call stories. 
uh, mm-hmm. that even creation itself um, is being called into existence by, by the word of God, that Adam and Eve are called to be good stewards of, of creation. And then you have the call of, of Abraham, the call of Moses, and there's just this series of call stories of the, this external threat of chaos, Leviathan, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. a strange beast of chaos that's trying to derail what God is trying to do in creation, that human beings are called to be um, co-creators, we're created in the image of God, co-creators, co-redeemers, that we're empowered with gifts so that we can take care of creation and, and heal it. So, so you have these call stories. So when I was thinking about Ultraman, I immediately thought of, of David and Goliath. You have this external threat, this larger than life giant who's coming in and small David has his gifts and whether it's just a slingshot defends um, his people. And then you have Moses up against Pharaoh uh, taking down this person who literally claims to be divine. And Moses is like, nope, let me show you who, who the real God is. And then ultimately you have Jesus stand up against the kaiju of, of death. And so defeats, defeats death and, and turns the table and, and changes the narrative when it comes to that. So what is our call story? What, we don't all have to be preachers. We don't have mm-hmm. to teach Sunday school, but, but we have gifts in this world. And so what is what are the external threat or the beast or the kaiju that we bump up against that we can resist against, whether it's systemic racism, whether it's a, mm-hmm. uh, taking care of the world, whether it's um, toxicity within a family or in our own faith community, what kaiju are we bumping up against and what gifts have we been given uh, to, to use to, to fight that? And hopefully we have longer than three minutes uh, to right. fight uh, those <laughs> things. Yeah. I want you to understand, Will, that was the first time that I have ever heard somebody make a kaiju joke about in reference to scripture. That was that was fantastic. There you go. That um, was. <laughs> so without without going into the the philosophy of it all, um, I fundamentally believe that humans inherently understand and so, uh, on, on a very deep level that there is something outside of us. I think too often you see people desiring something external to themselves to bring them satisfaction or joy or peace or whatever the case, strength, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so you, you look at something like Ultraman and it is – any of these kind of, and especially one like this, that's so beat for beat indwelt by something outside of yourself that brings you strength and all of those mm-hmm. kinds of things that you realize that this is a manifestation of humans desire to have something outside of themselves dictating the pace or dictating mm-hmm. the, the, you know, how effective you are and strength and all of those kinds of things. Um, I, I think as humanity and especially as, as a broken um, species, you know, with, with inherent said nature and all of that, that we have that, 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 that our, our barometer no, even if it's even if it's still if even if we're still self-centered and on the self, I think at some level we do understand that there is strength outside of ourselves mm-hmm. that, you know, and, and a lot of time that that can get manifested in some in some weird ways and and some unhealthy ways and all of those kinds of things. But mm-hmm. to me, when I see something like this, um, it is just a, a very beat for beat representation of that that idea brought to life nice that was good guys anyone else want to chime in on this one all right well then let's start wrapping it up all right so we have technically done a bunch of recommendations already but either related to ultraman or otherwise guys is there anything you would like to recommend to our audience today yeah, I mentioned um, in, in a podcast earlier reading a sci-fi book called The Three-Body Problem. It's by a Chinese author. Um, it's been reckoned with my work in faith and science here at our church and with students and stuff. People recommend it because it did a big deep dive into quantum physics and uh, the standard model. And it, it, it gets really deep into those things. Uh, but as we're talking about Ultraman as he's writing, there is this kind of secret society of scientists going on in that book. And being an author from from Asia, from China, I'm like, man, I wonder if he's pulling from this kind of like, 
United Space Patrol, mm -hmm. Science Patrol, something like that. It was like, there's something he's alluding to. So, so this podcast talking this out made me go, ah, I see what they're doing there. There's another kind of secret science society just trying to figure out what's going on on the quantum level of the fabric of the universe. And um, as I'm reading this book, it's like, why is this not a movie yet? And so I Googled it and there was like, oh, coming to Netflix in 2023. Of course. An episodic. Uh, and I was like, okay, cool. So I'm glad I'm reading the book and I'm glad eventually it'll be a show where I can see what I missed or what I misunderstood or uh, hopefully I'll like it and they'll do a good job with the source material. But um, I'm, I'm geeking out hard on that and love it. along with my regular comic book pulls and <laughs> TV shows I'm watching. That's been a fun sci-fi book uh, that's really kind of stretching me and challenging me and, and looking up terms and trying to figure out <laughs> uh, what's going on in the world. <laughs> what was the name of the book one more time? Uh, the three body problem. Three body problem. All right, cool. Joe, how about you? Um, I have been um, I've been going into some of the classic storylines for Daredevil. Um, there's a YouTube channel called Matt Draper. He does um, summaries of different pieces and things like that, different storylines, all of that kind of stuff. And with um, Everybody being so excited over Daredevil showing up in No Way Home. I, I always, you know, was fine, a fine character and all of that kind of stuff. But I didn't have any like actual connection to like reading any of his stuff or anything like that. He was more of a guy that showed up in other things that I watched. Okay. And, right. and I'll tell you, there are some... We we could do whole conversations about the religious and philosophical implications of some of the moral quandaries found in some of Daredevil's stuff. So um, there's all sorts of runs out there and, and really strong mm -hmm. stuff. But also, if you're looking for a good starting point, look up that YouTube channel. It's a good, a good place to start. Nice. Nice. For me, I, I have completely out of left field my recommendation for this one. Uh, I've been going hard on a podcast right now called Mixtape Theology. Do, have either one of you heard of this one? So Ooh. it is um, 90s Christian pop culture. And every episode of the podcast focuses on a different 90s CCM song. And it's a little devotional. Like most of these episodes are like 10 minutes tops um they've done Stephen curtis chapman songs the newest episode was on kirk franklin's song stomp uh and their social media is like all things just like 90s geek 90s christian culture memes is all that their social media <laughs> is so it definitely gets a nostalgia joe i don't know you might get a kick out of it um so oh, I'm literally get... looking it up as we speak. That sounds like that is exactly <laughs> my alley. Yeah. Yeah, they're, mm -hmm. they're pretty good. I think they've been around a little longer than us. So they're pretty new as well. All right. Well, just in case anybody wants to listen to us talk about things that's not Ultraman, Will, where can people find you? Oh, I'm on social media like Instagram and Facebook and around those different spaces. And uh, yeah, hit me up. I'm also through the Systematic Ecology website. If there's a topic or something you want us to talk about, uh, Systematic Ecology is on Twitter as well. We like to kind of share things and share the things we're geeking out on and you know, DM us and, and let us know if you have a thought or a hot take or something you want to talk about. Thank you for plugging the Twitter, because I don't know if we actually have plugged the Twitter on an episode yet. So it's Go. at Systematic Geek, right? Is that the handle? I think so. Yeah, I don't think That's it's Geekology. Handle. I think it's just Geek. Joe, where can people find you? Um, you can find me uh, on all of the socials, Facebook and all of that kind of stuff at um, Buddy Walk with Jesus. It's the other show that I co-host. Um, and you can also find me um, tooling around in the um, I, I, I tend to stay in the in the Facebook world of systematic ecologies environment and all of that kind of stuff. So a lot of times if you reach out on there, I'll be one of the people that you'll either hear back from or, you know, interact with that kind of thing. Nice. And again, I'm Brandon, and you can find me on Instagram at just.brandon.k or on Twitter if you really want to, just <laughs> underscore Brandon K. I also have my own podcast, My Seminary Life, which you can find on the 
the the platforms just look it up and it's on facebook and instagram at my seminary life pod and joe and i are hosts over at the live show kingdom on the road which is on saturday nights on facebook i wish i could be there more but joe's always there because it's his gig but i show up on occasion so come check us out over there tune in next time when we'll be talking about something else that's how organized we are here josh is, right. josh that's is right. gonna hate me for that joke but mysterious most importantly never forget that we are all a chosen priesthood a geekdom of priests This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.